Key question. Why the future is exciting? Uh, I think this is an important question. <laughs> Easy to answer, right? But why is it exciting? I think what we're seeing, I don't, I'll give you some facts, okay? This is why the future is better than we think. Uh, first of all, global trends are absolutely amazing. For example, the extreme decline in poverty. This is happening in almost all countries. The worst part that's against this is the increase in inequality. So more people are making more money and, and less people are making less money, and more people are more making less money. That's completely different than poverty, but poverty is declining. Mortality rate of infants and kids, declining. The cost to map the human genome used to be billions of dollars. It's 820 euros now. And roughly in five years, the cost of mapping the genome will be about five euros. Uh, and there's enormous things we can do with that. Life expectancy, we've already talked about this. Global population growth is not going to leave us with 20 million people, billion people. It's actually slowing. Yeah, we're going to be 10 billion people, and that's a lot of people. We're not going to be 20 billion. That's, that's a positive development. Energy, huh? this is the world's energy need. And predictions are roughly in 20 years, you know, somewhere up the curve there, we'll be able to cover our energy needs with renewable energy. That's when energy becomes as cheap as Spotify. Imagine that for a second. I mean, that's a huge shift in society. You can see that here, you know, what's happening with oil and gas and, you know, the clean energy curve. You can see battery technology, for example, right? I mean, look at the beginning of the battery technology, advanced energy capacity, zero, right? I mean, look at this as a hugely exponential curve. Without batteries, none of this will work. So this is a huge thing also for airlines flying this. I mean, all of the curves combined in one graph, you can see you know, there's lots of good things happening. You wouldn't believe it when you're looking around. It seems like everything is going bad, right? So within 20 to 30 years, we're very likely to be able to end hunger and food shortages, stop and maybe reverse climate change, beat major diseases, desalinate water, solve the energy problem, that's 20, 30 years. I mean, it's not much time in overall space, right? So it's kind of late for us maybe to enjoy the, all of that, but our kids will be in the full benefit of that. So uh, I will tell you a few other things that are a uh, little bit more challenging. For example, the fact that because of technology, anything that can be digitized or automated will be. I mean, literally anything. Teaching. Invention, science, robotics, warehouses, distribution, driving. Okay, that sounds like bad news, but here's the good news. Anything that cannot be digitized or automated or virtualized becomes extremely valuable. Okay. And what is that? That's, that's us. Right? Human thinking, creativity, design, understanding, negotiation, invention. So that is, a, I think it's actually a bright future, but of course it will challenge us. So uh, a lot of people talk about that future being our, you know, the, the most efficient, optimized robotic systems in the world. And then again, there's the useless humans. I don't think we're going to be useless humans. I'll tell you in the afternoon more detail about why that is. But this is, uh, I think, the more positive outlook on the future. Uh, let's do quickly about the mega shifts, and we'll go back to the poll and, and take a short break and get their brain to, uh, uh, to vent. So a uh, big chapter in my book is called The Mega Shifts. Okay? And basically, this is a recipe for corporate change, for how to change companies. Okay? Because guess what? It's not just this one thing. You know, when, when I talk to companies, they're saying, now, how about digital transformation? Right? What is digital transformation? That's like social media. You know, nobody knows. It's a, it's a word. Anything you don't know, you just say it's transformation, right? Uh, or, or AI, right? <laughs> but but it really, it's all these things are happening. It's going mobile. It's going personalized, right? It's basically one of the key points is that things are becoming datafied. So things that used to be stupid, like medical records, paper records, nobody knows what it says except for the person who wrote it. And now that's going into the cloud. 
I mean, that is changing everything, including, of course, security issues. Cognification which means that machines can actually think, right? They can compute stuff like traffic lights and environmental sensors and right, automation changing our entire society, anticipation being able to predict scenarios. This is a very important factor of banking and also telecom, of course. Augmentation, I'll talk about that in a second. So we'll talk throughout the day through those mega shifts, but I sh I'll show you a couple examples. I think to 90% this is a huge opportunity. Huh? So my recipe is for corporate change is to say, well, if you want to understand the future, the first thing you should do is understand the mega shifts and, and, and what they do. Because all of the competition now is coming based on the mega shifts. Huh? Companies that are coming there from the mega shifts. For example, uh, this is an example of Google uh, and the, uh, the cognification of the health business, right? So Google is working on a contact lens that can read uh, uh, medical data, nanobots in your bloodstream. Uh, it sounds like science fiction, already being trialed, not entirely legal. The FTC has said some of that can be done. Right? The smart pill that you swallow that diagnoses your body it's kind of a hard thing to say whether you would believe that's accurate or not and what exactly else it would do, like, you know, give data to the NSA, maybe, I don't know. But cognification of that system, and then you have this, right? You have robotics, and this is happening around the world already. It's very popular in Japan to have robot companions. I think in, in societies in Europe this is will be more difficult it? because we tend to want to have actual people. <laughs> but it's you know, you can you can Think talk to them, you can Amazon's pet them. Alexa, you know. Surfing on a roof. Uh, and you she know, for old people, they will tell you to take your pills. Your can probably do a lot more. Uh, and that's but you know, there's hundreds of products that do this. Home. We have two of them here, by the way. Play your favorite podcast. Uh, hey, Grace. Play a podcast. A billion today. Play podcast. You know, do I mean basically? Uh, again, it's not a robot; it's a friend. Right? Let's keep that in mind. The blockchain, right? You guys have heard about the blockchain? Okay, uh, I won't talk much about it because it will, uh, it will blow the frame of today. But the blockchain is essentially a distributed peer-to-peer -peer exchange system of important information. Okay. And the first embodiment wa was Bitcoin, of course. Right? But now the blockchain is, is set to reinvent banking, insurance, and anything with large amounts of data. Uh, estimates roughly in five years we can do transactions for 95% less cost using a distributed file sharing system. The only key point here is control. <laughs> I'm sure you know when you're in this business <laughs> uh, controlling financial transactions. But we have many opinions, you know, saying this is going to be as important as email. Some people say as important as the next internet and there's already many insurance companies and executives uh, and of course, in, uh, in, in energy and environment, this is becoming one of the key components. Uh. So blockchain is one of the, the key uh, results of this. So sometimes I like to say this is our future, and I think this really applies to Greece very well. Right? We just take X, whatever business, and we make it smart. Right? I, b I call this a smart converter. So smart cities, smart government, that, that would be a true conversion. Uh, Smart energy, smart farming, uh, smart banking, smart media. Smart media, that's already happening a little bit, right? So basically, you could say, you know, smart agriculture, right? very big deal. Also in Greece, of course, vertical farming, for example. Right? Farms built on high rises. Right? So all that stuff is a huge opportunity. I mean, this is all wide open. Right? Smart cities, for example. Most cities in the world are now have major initiatives to make their city connected, to figure out how to reduce emissions, to make more room, to improve transportation. I mean, that's a giant opportunity. I'll show you the opportunity map in a second. Here is, for example, smart marketing. Okay, this is a digital billboard that recognizes the car that goes by and changes the ad. So this is basically completely targeted advertising. So if you're driving a Jaguar, it will show you what else you can buy that's also from Jaguar or whatever, right? This is... That was technically impossible until just recently. That's just one glimpse of the future, you know, how that's becoming smart, smart marketing and smart things like this. So in the past, we electrified 
You know, we dealt with electricity, in the future we're cognifying. Right? We're giving things the ability to think, like the car. Now, let's make no mistake about this. These, these things don't think like we do at all. Right? They, they think like a machine. That's good enough, right? because they can do a lot of really powerful things here. Right? I mean, this guy is clearly excited about being driven in a cognified car. You know, what does this mean for business? You know, it, this is a mind-boggling change to cognify your business, you know, to, make, to use machines to create more intelligence. Right? Right? Personalized ads, but this could also be a nightmare, of course. You know, you have, you have here these kind of, this is a, uh, a hotel app called Hotel Tonight. Okay? That you may know, it's one of the most powerful apps. If you're ever stuck anywhere in the world in the, in the day and you don't have a hotel reservation, use this app. Right? It's called Hotels Tonight. You can get four and five star hotels at 80% discount. Right? It's because it's, it's done virtually, directly through the cloud where you are. Right? And they have a chat agent. It's basically using uh, cognitive systems and, you know, to figure out how, what the future is. So some people are saying smart machines will do 85% of all customer service interactions by 2020. Smart machines. Today, when you call the airline, you have to wait a long time because, you know, it's a person. Uh, the other day, I was part of a trial in India, and they trialed a new system that was completely artificial intelligence, you know, robotic systems in, in the cloud. I made 10 phone calls to change my reservation. And from the 10, I could only tell one that it was a machine. Okay. I mean, I called the person, it was a software, right? I gave my PIN number, my PNR, right? and the system responded, gave me all the options, read, read all the options, pulled up all my information. It was a little bit like mechanical, but could have been a person. Imagine what that will do to call centers. 95% yeah? of people. That's 14 million, uh, approximately. 